Hi everyone, this is the second half of my Delphi method presentation and this will go into more details about the steps, the limitations, and also two examples of the use of the Delphi method. Some of the keys to success when doing a Delphi method is one, um, maintaining anonymity of the experts. As I talked about in my previous video, it's very important that each of the experts don't know each other. This way they'll be more free and open to presenting different ideas and not um, criticizing each other of the ideas or giving in to one expert. In addition, um, the collection, the structure of the initial data is really a key to success. If the questions are posed correctly, you can really um, gather a lot of information from this method. Um, this cyclical feedback um, until consensus. That's also a great way where people talk about it. They see what other people have suggested. They um, gain new knowledge along the way in this because there's some time between each um, round and so there's time where they might gather new information and then coming to consensus really will give what hopefully is a forecast for the future for whatever um, research you're trying to find. And finally, the statistical structure allows for quantitative analysis. What this means is that because a lot of times you're ranking and asking them to give ideas, um, what you're going to come out with is data that can be used. Um, you can analyze using mean, mode, median, as well as many other different statistical um, analysis to get um, really quantify the data that you found. Here's just a couple examples of um, limitations and drawbacks to this um, method. Um, one, the success depends on the quality of the participants. So you have to choose carefully and try to choose people, participants that cover a wide range of um, expert fields. You'll notice that in one of the examples that they um, chose from different fields. Also, um, future forecasting might be affected by paradigm shifts in the um, in, in the world. You know, there's a lot of times a paradigm shift, and that might totally affect what um, ideas you've been forecast for. And finally, as a researcher, be careful not to impose your own preconceptions on the views, especially since you'll be co um, co uh, coding the data and putting it all together. You have to be careful about what your own views are on the subject. And remember to, to investigate and don't ignore disagreements. If there's disagreements and tough time coming to consensus, don't ignore what's happening, but investigate those disagreements so you can bring it to a consensus that you know is um, closer to what you're hoping the future will look like. And remember that this whole process will take time as you do a round and then collect the data and then send out for a second round and then even a third and fourth round. It's going to take time for those people to respond back to you and for you to um, collect the data and send it out again. Other drawbacks um, include the uh, ability to look at the validity of your results. Sometimes there's a difficulty in generalizing the results to a wider population depending on your sample size that you've chosen, um, the limited views of the participants in your project, in the ability to forecast, um, the specific, specific agenda of the questions that you ask, and the geographic location of some of the participants might affect if you're looking at a worldwide picture. Uh, most researchers, researchers recommend that even though you've done a Delphi method, that you take those results and then try to further study those results um, in some other methods to validate what you found. And finally, the success is always going to depend on the quality of participants. If the participants really aren't experts in the field, then the results you might get will not be a right forecast for what you're looking for. The first example I want to tell you about is um, a paper entitled Priorities in K-12 Distance Education, a Delphi study examining multiple perspectives on policy practice and research. Um, the research question was, what are the priorities in five years for K-12 distance education? The nice thing about this example is that they actually pulled experts from three different groups, pra practitioners, people in the field, deci decision makers on distance education, and also researchers who have been studying distance education. The three research questions asked really quickly are, what should be the research practice and policy priorities surrounding K-12 distance education over the next five years? What are the differences and or similarities between the perspectives of researchers, practitioners, and those who are in position to influence policy? And what are the implications of these similarities differences for the planning and implementation of K-12 distance education programs? In the first round, 29 participants were asked the three research questions, and they generated 149 open-ended responses. These were coded and um, whittled down when, with duplicates to 96 statements, and then they were broken into nine subscales of um, main. Following the Delphi method, 
all of the information that was coded and generated was sent back to the participants where they had a chance to review and change any statements they had made or make any edits based on new information. Then in the second round, they were given all the new sets of statements and they were asked to rank the importance of each of the statements and rank the importance of the subscales. Then finally reviewed again in the third round, they again were asked to rank after seeing their ranks um, compared to the ranks of everybody else. And this resulted in giving a consensus of what the highest ranking ideas were and highest ranking. The researchers now had a list of answers as well as subscales that they could use for further research. They ranked the importance of the subscales, and here are the top three. Evaluation of course design and delivery, best practice, and accountability. They went ahead and created a recommendation section where they um, made the researchers made um, ideas based on the results recommendations for the future priorities in K-12 distance education. The second study was called Clarifying Distance Education Roles and Competencies, Exploring Differences Between Professional and Student Practitioner Perspectives, and it involved 106 upper-level graduate students from 11 different programs around the country who specialized in distance education and looked at what they felt were the roles and competencies necessary for distance education. Really quick, the research questions for this example are, what are advanced distance education graduate student practitioner perspectives regarding the roles and competencies of distance educators? What are the differences and or similarities between graduate student practitioner perspectives and expert scholars in distance education regarding the roles and competencies of distance educators? What explanations are there for differences and or similarities in responses from the current and previous studies? What implications are presented by this study for development of competencies in the field of distance education? In round one, people were presented with 12 roles and descriptions of what a distance education teacher should do and their descriptions. The respondents were asked to modify, accept, or reject these roles. In round two, they looked, before round two, they looked at the summary of the roles that were provided um, from everyone else, and they were allowed to uh, provide further feedback and um, make comments on what the other participants had suggested. Then, in round two, they were presented with that list, as well as a list of 57 competencies for distance education instructors, and they were asked to identify what were the key ones for distance education teachers and to select the most relevant ones and then add any additional competencies that weren't listed. Round three, they had a summary of the competency list and they were asked to rank them. Round four, they saw what, how they had ranked the competency list um, versus how everyone else had ranked the list and were allowed to change their rankings based on what everyone else had said, um, thus bringing everybody to consensus of what was considered the uh, most important competencies for a distance education instructor. The top three competencies chosen by the graduate students were basic technology skills, technology access knowledge, and computer networking. What was interesting is in the other part of the study, they um, compared the results of this study with two other studies involving experts and professionals, um, instructors, to see what they felt were different competencies. And you should take a look at the rest of that study to see it's pretty interesting. I will post my PowerPoint as well so that you can get um, and click on these downloads. But um, thank you for watching the presentation. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it helped you understand the Delphi method.